I'm Alex Del Sordo. I'm Alex Del Sordo. I'm Alex Del Sordo, and we have, but we have just Eddie. It's Kevin Sauer. Needed to France. Eric Murray. He, it's Mahe Drysdale. It is Sir Matthew Pinson. Thank you for being here. I'm Alex Del Sordo, Rowers Choice, and I have another, another podcast. But this is a good one because I don't know who this person is. And normally, when we do interviews, we're somehow connected. And this entire podcast is going to be dedicated to figuring out how I'm connected to the head coach of Ohio State Division One rowing, Kate Sweeney. Kate Sweeney, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited. I, I am too. I like talking about rowing, but I do every, every single one. I, I start the same way. And it is, how old were you? Where were you when you had your first rowing stroke? Yeah, so I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I went to a small all-girls high school called Oakland Catholic, and there is a much more famous rowing alum from that institution, um, Amanda Polk, who is a uh, United States gold medalist, Oh yeah. and she was my teammate on the basketball team, and she, that is the person that convinced me to try rowing. And I'm very grateful for that. And, and so Oakland Catholic High School is where I took my first stroke. And how old were you when that happened? What year? Was the 14, picture. 14, freshman year. 14. Now, you said basketball. Okay. So you clearly, you're, you're, you're clearly an athlete. Okay. If you're playing basketball and you're playing high school basketball, um, aside from Amanda being a hell of a sales, saleswoman, um, what drew you? off the court and onto a boat because that, that's a big difference that's a huge difference right yeah and I was I was sure that basketball was my path like I was this would have never happened but I was going to play in the WNBA like that was my, <laughs> my plan <laughs> how, how, tall, uh, how tall are you I am I am 5'8 so like that was not going to happen okay. <laughs> I wasn't that great I was decent but the WNBA was not my cards so um I think what hooked me was the people that were my teammates at Oakland Catholic and just that you know I thought basketball was a team sport and it is obviously but when I got into an eight and into a four or even into a pair like there really is no other sport like this where you rely on your teammates in such a way um maybe sailing I'm not sure but <laughs> you know in my my 14 years of existence I was like whoa this is unlike anything else I've ever experienced and that's what hooked me. How good was that team? Like, I know Oakland Catholic. I, I, I'm well aware of where, where they row. And Pittsburgh is a rowing town. Now, mm -hmm. I think that you were there, I want to say, like, early, mid-2000s, like, 05, 06. Is that right? Yeah. You were there? Yeah. Yeah, I graduated in 07. So, okay. So, so I mean, you know, you had three rivers. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a lot of, like, really big. Was rowing a popular sport at Oakland? No. Uh, no, it wasn't. And it was becoming more popular. I think while I was there, we weren't that good. You know, our highlight was doing well. We might've won Stotesbury like my junior year. And we thought that was like winning the national championship. Um, and so. All right, hold on for a second. Let me interrupt. <laughs> Stotesbury is a national championship. I am a South Jersey man. I, we didn't even care about youth nationals if you won stotesbury by the time you were 21 and people knew it you'd be drinking for free in atlantic city it's a uh, guarantee it's i missed my calling then in atlantic uh, city <laughs> yeah we won it we won, i don't know i was in a junior four, i can't even remember a junior four or something that, and that boat was great but what kept me at oakland instead of kind of dabbling it at three rivers or elsewhere was the people the connection i had with my teammates and um many of whom, you know, uh, have gone on to do pretty cool things. So. You know, you're such the opposite of a rowing nerd. A rowing nerd would never forget the junior four women's victory at Stotesbury. And you're like, I kind of think we were, we want it. I don't remember. It is what it is moving on. That is like, that is so awesome. I love that. <laughs> My current um, biggest sports thrill, and you're going to laugh, but it, in my dad will be happy I'm saying this. My eighth grade year, we won the diocesan basketball championship. And like <laughs> that is to this date, 
<laughs> biggest sports thrill, proudest moment, because um, it was so hard. <laughs> wow, it felt so hard. Um, well, I, I mean, like, so I knew I knew a couple, uh, specifically women, who played basketball, and the dads were always committed. I mean, it was a thing. The dads drove them to the tournaments. The dad did this. The dads did that. So they're they're kind of living vicariously through their daughter. Uh, and I'm one of them. I mean, I, I watched my daughter play baseball. I feel like I hit the home run. You know, she didn't, I did. <laughs> All right. So you did, you did Oakland Catholic and then you went to Ohio state. And I know doing my limited research, you're third generation. So was it like a foregone conclusion that you were going there? Was that just like in the books before you even no, started? I did not want to go to Ohio state. I, my granddad, my, you know, my junior year took me on a tour of campus and I was like, this is nice. Like, it's fine. It's very comparable to Penn State. It, at the time, I felt that way. No yeah. longer. I okay. do not, not any longer feel that way. Yeah. Um, but I was like, you know, big state school, big state school. And I was like, yeah, my dad went there. I had a, I have a ton of cousins who, who went here. Um, my parents met here uh, at law school. So I was just kind of like, eh, let, let's look elsewhere. And then I came back for a visit and I met the team. And I was like, oh no, I have to tell my family that I want to go to Ohio State. <laughs> and uh, that's how I am. It's going to be a big proud moment for them, right? Yeah. I mean, holy cow. How good, um, how good was the football team uh, when you were there? Was it like, a, was that a big draw for you too? Just like that big, that big stadium, the big history of football? That was pretty cool. My, my, mater my, my maternal, excuse me, uh, grandfather played at Notre Dame and was a, you know, big Notre Dame player his cousin was an even more famous Notre Dame player oh, this is in like the 30s so forever ago and so Notre Dame football was something that my whole life I had been super into but um, coming here and going to the stadium for the first time was unlike anything else and that was pretty cool my freshman year we were we were really good I think we it was the year both our football team and our basketball team played in the national championship and both lost to the Florida Gators so <laughs> That's oh wow! So I know yeah. I know those years. Holy cow! That's Tim Tebow time, isn't it? Wasn't that, that Tim is, Tebow? That is Tim Tebow. That is Verjao. I think was on the basketball team. I, yeah. Maybe that, maybe that's not right. But you you right. have to fact check me on that. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, you should you should. I mean, look, I I kid, but you should know these things. You're Ohio State. I know. Born and raised. Uh, okay, so I'm pretty. This is pretty interesting, right? So you obviously studied something other than being a head coach and crew at school like you were on a path somewhere else but then you graduate and you decide coaching rowing is a thing for you um so where did you go after ohio state what was your next move the year right after ohio state i served a year with americorps and the organization that i worked with was is called city year and i okay. stayed here in columbus um it's a basically an organization where you serve as a near peer um, tutor, academic support, mentor for students in the, you know, in Columbus area. And I worked at South High School and it was awesome. And I coached at what is no longer in existence, but Dublin Rowing. Um, they have, you know, they've changed their name since uh, for, for a year. And that was wow. high school boys. I, I coached high school boys. Oh, oh my gosh. I had a blast. They were awesome. you had a blast. Oh my yeah. god! They they probably they looked at you as if you walked on water, right? Maybe. I mean, <laughs> they just probably thought you. Were done. So you did this thing at Maricor. Um, what brought you to coaching at the collegiate level? So I think you went to somewhere in Indiana, right? Mm -hmm. After that, so like, what was what drew you there? Why did you do it? I had, you know, my my coach, my college coach, was like, "When are you going to do this? Like, when are you going to decide that you want to coach?" Wow. And I hadn't really realized before then, obviously I understood that there were coaches at, that had this as the profession, but it wasn't something that I had thought about for myself. And he mentioned that, you know, Steve Peterson at Indiana had an opening. And so I applied and then Steve made a huge error and he hired me. And then <laughs> here we are. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. So did your former coach at Ohio state, did he, say that to a lot of the women on your team when are you going to coach is that was or is was there just something that he saw in you specifically that said what is it there are a lot of ohio state rowing alum around the country 
So I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe he, he said that to a lot of people. I'm not sure, but it meant something to me. It meant a lot to hear that and to know that, you know, somebody who's done well at this thinks that I could do well at this. So yeah, gave it a go. You have a, you have a gift of gab. I think uh, I would use the phrase gift of gab. You, you can, you're very easy to talk to. So I think from a coach's perspective or from an athlete's perspective, that's really good to have, right? I have a coach that is, is easy to talk to. Um, I'm, I'm assuming you're really good at motivating, you know, getting behind this idea, this concept. So, all right. So pay me the picture a little bit more, right? So this is Indiana. What year were you at Indiana? So that would have been, so spring of 14 and spring of 15, I was in Indiana. And then, and then how successful was that program? Like, what were your, what were your responsibilities? What were you focused on for those two years? So I came in as the novice coach. Um, the, the team had not been to NCAAs before, uh, before 2014. And we were able to figure, figure it out together and get to NCAAs that year. And that was really cool in 2014 mm -hmm. for the first time. And yeah, so I, and I was the novice coach. So I worked mostly with the novices, but ended up coaching the four in the spring. Um, it's that, getting uh, a little uh, foggy now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I mean, yeah, it's six, seven years ago. Now we're talking um, and a lot's changed in your life in those times. Um, okay, so what happens in 2016? What'd you do? My wife got a, my then, you know, partner, but now wife uh, got a job at Berkeley and we moved out what to does California. She do? What, is, what does she do? She is in compliance. Well, she was in compliance. And so she got a job in compliance. Do you just hate that as a coach? I mean, oh my yeah. gosh, what, what an awful pairing. <laughs> compliance. Ugh. It, also, it, it happened to be very helpful because, you know, if I had a question, it was always, I can answer the question, but you have to confirm with, you know, um, oh. your compliance person. But in a pinch, <laughs> in a pinch, we always had somebody to help. But so she worked in compliance out there. We went out there for a year. Uh, Al Acosta emailed me. I think Steve gave him a, the heads up. I was coming out and asked if I'd like to volunteer. Yeah. And like, of course, I would like to volunteer at uh, at Cal. Like, of course. Of course. <laughs> so you were you were, man. That's tough. So that's such a hard thing, right? Like your partner, your wife, your companion said, I got this job and now you got to pick up and leave a, a career at Indiana that could very well have been something incredible, right? I mean, you don't know. Um, was that, how was that conversation with the coach there and the staff? They're like, hey, look, we've had a great couple of years. I got to go. Was that a difficult one to have? You know, it, it was and it wasn't. Steve is a really great guy. And is really supportive of me in that move and has been very supportive of me in my new role. So it, it was hard to say bye to the team, but I was very supported when it was time to go. So you were supported. Good. And then Berkeley, you come in, you're a volunteer. Mm -hmm. What, what on earth are you doing there? Are you sweeping the floors? Or are you coaching a crew team? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> um, there is one, there was one time when the other volunteer and I did actually sweep out the boathouse floor, but not because anybody made us, we just decided to do it. Uh, <laughs> the other volunteer at the time was Lou, Lou Kinder, and she's an awesome human. She was an alum of, of Cal, but yeah, I, we, I was coaching, I was coaching, um, some, some of the walk-ons and some of the younger folks, the less experienced yeah. student athletes, and it was great. All right. Now. Listen, it's no, it's no secret that you're one of the youngest, if not the youngest head coach in the division one rowing, um, mm -hmm. to go from 2016 as a volunteer, which is ridiculous to running the program at Ohio state in less than five years in four years. In, yeah. In four years. What's your secret? Uh, there's a lot of people that listen and watch this podcast. Like how on earth did you do that? What happened? How did you get there that fast? Well, I think a lot of it is probably being <laughs> sort of in the right place at the right time. Okay. Um, after the year at Berkeley, well, about a few months into my year at Berkeley, the there was a 
an additional coaching position approved by the NCAA. So there used to be two assistant coaches and now there's three. And Ohio State had been told that they were going to get a third assistant coach position in line with the new rules. And I got, you know, called pretty early on. Um, Andy picked up the phone and said, is this what you want to do next year? Yeah. And I'm like, we just got to California. <laughs> um, but, you know, after a lot of thinking and conversation uh, with, with Bree, my wife, we decided that I had to take the shot because I love Ohio State. I have a ton of family here in Ohio and in Pennsylvania. Did she move with you too? Did she go to Ohio? Yeah, she came back. Oh my she, gosh. And she got a job at Ohio State. So it worked out pretty well. <laughs> compliance too, right? Is it still compliance? Oh, yeah. Gosh, she's, compliance. she's moved on from Ohio State now. But uh, but yeah, she, so, so that helped. So coming back here was awesome. I had the opportunity to work with two other really great assistants. Um, Anna Goodale, who was an Olympian herself, and then uh, Madeline Davis Tully, who's now the director of growing at Boston University. And so getting to learn from the both of them as well was absolutely incredible. Okay, so pandemic comes, you get this job, you're the head coach, mm -hmm. and now you're going into your first full season, right? Your first real full season. Um, what I don't want to ask you what your I want to ask, but I don't want the answer of like what was your biggest struggle in the pandemic because everyone had the same struggles. What are you doing now? What's happening now? It's you're getting into your winter season. What are you doing as a as a as a young coach at Ohio State with the pandemic slightly behind us? Uh, <laughs> we're getting ready to go on our winter training trip. Okay. So, so that's great. No, we, the, the student athletes, this is the week before finals. So finals start next week. Um, we've had a really good fall. We prioritize taking as many strokes on the water as we could. And okay. we're in a good place. We have a lot of fitness to gain, but the, the team is in a, is in a good place. And the leadership of both our leadership group and our upperclassmen has been really great this year. What, when you got that job and now you're entering your first major season, what's been the biggest uphill battle for you? What's been the biggest thing to overcome? I mean, this is a big job. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's, it would be like me jumping in to be the CEO of some fortune 500 company. I mean, like I'm not there yet. Right. What has been your biggest hurdle or your biggest thing to get over? I very quickly realized that I have to make a lot more decisions than I did as an assistant. And that is, that is hard when you're not in the practice of, first of all, figuring out what decisions do I need to make? And then what decisions can I have others make? Mm. So trying to figure out what's for me and what's for others. And so that I think has been the hardest thing for me to, to, to sort out. Um, it's getting better and getting easier and things are becoming more predictable, like issues that pop up. I'm like, oh, yep, we've seen that. You know, I know how to handle that now, or I can call somebody that can help me figure out how to handle that now. But feeling like all these questions are coming my way and trying to process like. Can you give me some examples of, of what some of those more decisions are? Oh, I mean, every like everything just from as big as, you know, where do we, where are we going on our winter training trip to like, you know, what color shoe do we want to order? Clearly that's a decision that, that somebody else can make, but a lot of those questions come your way and color shoes inside a boat or like, no. were, well, yes, actually. Yes. We do have that conversation. Our boat man always, you know, he's great. He brings props. He's like, what do you want? I'm like, you pick, you are the expert. Um, <laughs> okay. He's, he's amazing. But I, I Truly, like big decisions um, to like which recruits, you know, are we going to go after and then smaller decisions that, you know, I've learned now that I can have Emily or Taylor uh, or Robbie, my assistants make so. Hmm. How much time do you think you're spending coaching a crew on the water versus handling all those other decisions? It's mm, a great question. There's a decisions are just other things that you know, we have to deal with off the water. Um, 
I, I'm not a great like numbers math person, <laughs> okay. but okay. a lot of time is spent on things that aren't necessarily coaching a crew on the water. And I think I've I've always... <laughs> it's closer to like 70, 30. It's yeah. like you're 70% a head coach, but you're 30% yeah. coaching a crew on the yeah. water. I think you're probably about right. I was going to say a quarter, like, but I think you're, you're, you're pretty on. Um, I've been doing this a long time. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, every single coach is going to say win a national championship. Like that's your goal, right? That's what you need to do. That's what you're paid to do. Um, what's short term for Ohio State? Like, what do you think? Where, where do you see the team going in the next two to three years? Our our biggest goal. Well, <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. That is yeah, something year. that we that we always put out there. But we want to get back. Um, at the top of the conference. So, you know, we've, we've had a, a few years now in a row where um, we've, we've come second and our goal is to, to win the big 10. Now that is a tall order. This is a competitive conference. We have some yeah. great, you know, I just listened before we got on, I was listening to your podcast with BB. And oh. uh, so, <laughs> so this is, I mean, it's a competitive conference, but that's our goal. That's the team's goal. And um, we have to, get them, you know, only a few of our athletes on our current roster have won a big 10 championship because of, you know, things that have happened. So it's hard to do what you haven't done. And so that's our, that's our goal. Our number one goal. Hard to do what you haven't done. Um, I'm writing that down. I take a lot of notes. Um, so I, when I was, so when I was coaching high school, um, I was coaching Bishop O'Connell, some small team in Virginia. And uh, I used to hate the other coaches because I was like, oh, I got to, I got to win. I got to beat them. Like, oh, I hate them. And uh, is it, is it different at the NCAA level? I mean, do you have, you know, BB Bryant, like she's a legend. She's a legend. Okay. She's a legend. Yeah. Do you have any kind of like, I don't know, like not anger, but do you have like energy, negative energy towards her because like you want to win that t- title or no? No, no, I, I don't. I, I can't speak for all of the NCAA coaches, but I have been floored at how incredible other coaches in our community have been um, okay. to me. So no, I, I want to learn from BB. Um, I want to learn from, from others. And it's a very collegial group. Collegial, man, you're hitting me with some words. You might not be good at math, but collegial is a heck of a word. I was an um, English major, thank you. <laughs> English major. Well, English major, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, I'm I'm a 17-year-old girl in high school, and I'm saying to you, why do I row at Ohio State? Tell me why I should pick up my oar and go to Ohio State and row for your program. Sell me. 30 seconds. Give it to me. I even listened to BB do this too. I like, <laughs> great stuff to say. <laughs> um, you know what we tell what we tell people that are looking at Ohio State is this is a this is hard. What we do is really hard. And if 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 you have a growth mindset, this is a really good place for you to come and row and to learn. You're going to get a world class education on campus, and you're going to get a world class education through the rowing program. We're gonna prepare you for the real world, for your job, for future relationships, through using rowing as the medium to teach you all of those things. And you're gonna do that with a tremendous amount of support from, from the coaching staff and from your teammates. And I think, you know, something else that, that we offer here is really competitive group, even within the team. There are a lot of high level athletes that come from all over the world and that we create here at Ohio State. And so it becomes a, a, an environment that really requires you to, um, to grow a lot. <laughs> Tell me, how, how would you describe, last question for you, how would you describe the ideal recruit that wants to go to or wants to apply for Ohio State or that you would pick up instantly? Because I think a lot of young women, young men at the high school level, either they don't know enough and they're like nervous to apply or they're nervous to contact the coach because they don't really know the criteria. Give me your ideal candidate. Another good question. So it, it depends. Um, we look for people that have some high level rowing experience 
we look for good humans, we look for people with the capacity to be, you know, high level rowers. That being said, there's only so many folks that fall into that category every year, right? So when we start to look at other people to, to join our team and fill our roster, we look for people who have displayed to us that they have a growth mindset that is really important to us. When you come in as a freshman, no matter who you are, no matter where you're coming from, it is really hard because it's your biggest change probably in your entire life since birth. And so people that are able to understand that this is a process, people that are truly willing to, and everybody says this, but be part of something bigger than themselves and have displayed that willingness, um, that their, their coach can speak to that or a teacher can speak to that. Those are some really important things to us. So we don't get too hung up on, uh, in terms of bringing people onto our roster, like necessarily the ERG score or even you know height and that sort of thing. Um, we found that you know you can you can first of all we'll get you fit, <laughs> and that if you've got enough heart and you're a good human and you do the work, we can get you to where you need to be. There it is. I think one of the most powerful things you said was uh, good human and coachable, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're, if you're coachable and you're a good human, uh, that's a good start. You don't necessarily have to have the strongest work. Kate, I, uh, I love this. I love learning about you. I had a wonderful time. I hope you enjoyed this 30 minute sit down with us here at Rover's Choice. I loved it. I'm, I'm very honored and appreciative that you had me on. Oh, come on, stop it. This is exciting. <laughs> now, if, uh, if people want to learn more, about Ohio State rowing. We're going to put in the podcast somewhere in here a link to Kate, how to get a hold of her, how to get a hold of Ohio State and watch her this year going after a Big Ten championship and hopefully the NCAA uh, national championship. Thanks for tuning in. You got more from us next week. I'm Alex Del Sordo. I'm Alex Del Sordo. I'm Alex Del Sordo. It's Kevin Sauer. Eric Murray. He it's Mahe Drysdale. It is Sir Matthew Pinson. Thank you for being here.